Hi everyone and welcome to the Spencer Lodge podcast here at the Success Resources event that we're at. And for me, getting people that are talented, that have got inspirational stories, that can educate people how to build their businesses and create success is really important. More importantly, we want to have a great start to 2020. So before I introduce my next guest, cue the music and let's enjoy the show. Right. So Peng, nice to see you. Thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, thank you for having me. You've been to Dubai before? Yeah, this would be my fourth year coming here and You know Dubai. this place then? Yeah, pretty you know much. What it's like. yeah. And what do you find? Do you find the people here compared to the Far East and compared to the UK and the States? Do you find them different here in terms of how they look at business and what you do? Or do you think that uh, every, everyone's kind of the same? Well, culture-wise, of course, things would be different. Yeah. But when it comes to marketing and persuasion, people's wants and needs globally are always the same. Yeah. So as a business owner, when you understand what people truly desire, then that is how you can craft the right marketing message to have the right mar- message to market match. I find that around the world, the, 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 there are differences culturally, but I find that most people want the same things. They're yep. kind of like, they want to live in peace, they want right. to enjoy their friends and their family, they want to become successful in their own right. way, depending on what they do. So I find that as much as we say things are different, I think we're all kind of like aiming for the same goal. 100%. At the end of the day, yeah? like, wh- like one of the things I'll, I, I can get somebody to do is like literally get them and close their eyes and I can say like, if you take a look at, I'll, and I'll say things like, I want a better life, I want to be able to take care of my family, my kids, I want to be able to have a degree of freedom, I want to be able to live life on my terms, I want to be able to take my family to nice restaurants. Um, and when I'm thinking about that in that process, I'm literally describing every single person out there, right? Okay. So if you can, whatever it is that person has, if you can link marketing messages based upon these different principles, that, that's persuasion right there. But how, how do you, let's go into a bit of detail here. How do you help people make money? How do you help people create a career and a, and a future? What is it exactly is it you do nice and simply for me so that we don't confuse people? Right. So I have a five step process. Number one is really just identifying a market that you want to go into. And if you take a look at the opportunity we have right now, every single market, whether it is makeup, whether it is playing computer games, whether it's gardening or serious markets like investing, real estate, social media, lead generation, that's a million dollar business right there. Somebody has made a million dollars selling slime online, right? So (laughs) the right question to ask is if somebody else did it in that market, what did that person do that you didn't do? So that's number one, really identifying what target segment you want to serve. Mm-hmm. The number two would be building a sales process around it. It's, it's not about having a website, it's about having a strategic set of pages to bring people through from the time they don't know who you are to the time they actually buy. And there's a proven sales process, whether it's to sell physical products, whether it's to sell digital products, whether it's coaching, whether it's business business, it's a proven sales model, a bu- proven business model for that target market. And number three is really about understanding how to promote a product. If you understand how to promote a product, whether it's your own product or somebody else's product, that is how you unlock and have leverage so that you're no longer trading time for money. When a business, a business becomes only when it becomes highly scalable, when they're no longer selling their time. So one of the things that I do is I coach many either businesses that selling services, entrepreneurs that's trading time for money, coaches, consultants, to get out of the game of selling more time because let's face it, during the good times when you're having a ton of sales and leads, what's gonna happen is that person that's in the service-based business is gonna hate their life because literally they will have no life, right? And, and then number four mm-hmm. is really about understanding traffic. It could be direct response, how do you s- drive traffic so that for yeah. every one dollar you spend, you get back two dollars in return, and building that brand, that following on social media by understanding that I was going to bring up my phone somewhere, but the phone is the new TV, yeah. right? Literally, the channels is the new the, the the apps are the new channels, and whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Google, LinkedIn, understand that the conversation is already happening right now, and you just got to figure out where your audience is hanging out and enter the conversations that they're already having. And finally, number five is just really understanding automation. Understanding that the big picture of the game is about removing yourself from the business and by having the right processes and by having the right systems in place. 
That, okay, you that. master these five things, that's how you build, grow, and you scale make business. You it sound so bloody simple. It's just like, that's the framework. Put it together, it's dead simple. Most people are intimidated yeah. by leaving the start of that journey, aren't they? Sure. Most people, it's kind of like, yeah, I want that outcome. Yep. I want that result that Peng's talking about. But that's kind of like, that's a lot. Yep. I, I, is it really? I mean, you must have started the first time you started and gone, oh, okay, this is quite complicated and kind of got over that hurdle. Is it purely mindset or is it actually quite complicated? Look, mindset is never a sexy topic. Most people <laughs> think that, you know, I don't have a mindset problem. People don't want to be told that either. It's, it's, but the truth is 80% of what we do is dictated by our belief, our attitude, which is really the mindset. Somebody, and, and, and it's interesting you say this because my mom, a decade ago, she asked me, she said, why don't you just teach this to your cousins and your family members, which, which I do. And sometimes she'll ask me like, why don't she just, they don't, they just go do them. You know, why is it that other people, if online marketing was that easy, why don't they just go learn it and do it? Yeah. And I was telling my mom, I said, mom, it doesn't work that way. Because even if somebody learns it, it doesn't mean that they'll go apply it and do it. And she said, that's not true. If, if there's something somebody wants, and if they know how to do it, they'll go do it. And I said, mom, that, here's why it doesn't. And I was trying to think about why that's not true. And the best example I could explain to my mom is this. I said, mom, think about this way. Being fit and healthy is something everybody wants, right? There isn't a single person on earth that wants to be sick. Everybody wants to be fit and healthy. At the same time, everybody knows what the moves are. The moves, it is a two-step process. Eat right, exercise consistently. Yeah. You know, don't tell me they don't know. The, they know the moves and it's something they want. But why is it that probably 99% of people are not in their ideal body shape? It is because wanting something and knowing how to do it is not enough. Maybe it's not important enough. Maybe they don't have the accountability. Maybe they don't have the motivation. Maybe they don't have the attitude, the mindset, which is all under that 80% of the mindset. So yes, a big majority of it all, the equation, is the mindset. But with that said, of course, it needs to be backed up with the right tools, the right strategies, and the right moves. Now, you've built a hugely successful business out of doing all of this. You've traveled all over the world and inspired many people. What inspires you? What gets you out of bed every day? Well, a lot of different things. Number one would be receiving a very simple message from somebody saying like, you know what? this post that you just made on Instagram or Facebook made my day. In fact, we've had somebody that actually said, you know what, I was thinking about ending my life and literally this one thing changed the way I looked at things. Um, just little things like that. And of course, like that could be like the different things that makes me feel fulfilled. And of course, you know, I think that in many ways, a lot of things that I do today is really driven by what the need and the want to make my parents proud. Um, that's been a huge factor in my life. I really believe that in many ways I won the genetic lottery. Um, we didn't necessarily have a lot of money back then, uh, but my father, the way he worked on the farm for 13 years, two jobs, I believe that they did everything that they could in their power to give me a good life. And it is my duty and my responsibility, and I'm always thinking about that to make sure now I'm able to do the same for them. But you, you, you genuinely must make them very proud already with what you've Of course, yes. I mean, you're only a young guy. How old are you? Well, not that young, 35. But yeah, you're a young yeah. guy, yeah. <laughs> but for me, you are. But you must have made them really proud already. When is, it, when is enough? It will never be enough. And I think that if we can have the wisdom to know that it will never be enough, that's different. And, and, and there... Because the truth is, success, significance, contribution, fulfillment, there's always the next level to that. And if we can have the wisdom to, and be okay with the fact that we're nev it's never going to be enough, that is when it'll be enough. Hmm. Interesting that you say that. So I know you're a big Iron Man fan. Yeah. I've seen some of the stuff you've produced online. I see that you've got this real awesome setup. Uh, yeah. Is it your offices? Yeah. Okay. Office and home. Office, got, yeah. office and home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And life size Tony Stark models and kit like that. Where yeah. did that interest come from? Um, I think that it was really from seeing myself in how Tony was like, his brilliance, his attitude, his ego. And how I saw in many ways what he was doing, uh, it inspired me. And I think that 
what I'm doing today, when people look at what I'm doing, people don't see that I really was this nerd and I would even say a loser for a huge part of my life. I was this like really scrawny kid, like borderline, borderline anorexic, skin and bones. I weighed like 40, 40 kg, 45 kg in high school. So I was like just skin and bones, um, lacked the confidence. Um, and who I am today is a totally different person. And that transformation, whenever I see like Tony, what he did, his transformation and who he became, um, that was very inspiring for me. That's really where you got it from. Yeah. And so do you think you have a responsibility now in your community that, that you speak to online to, to help inspire other people to make the right choices and make the right decisions? Do you see that as a responsibility you have? I wouldn't say it's a responsibility because that, that's a heavy word, but I do feel that there's this need for contribution because there was a point in time when I was selling all these different products in the gaming and dating space and when somebody paid me for that product at $37, the money was good, but I still f felt like there was an ingredient that was missing. And doing this gives me that sense of fulfillment the sense of meaning and purpose. Because money, up to a certain point, like, it really doesn't do anything after that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you're gonna stay in a hotel and it's still gonna be one bed, you're still gonna drive one main car, stay in, like, and after that, then what? You know, yeah. And do you think that, uh, you're from Malaysia originally, yeah? Yeah. Okay, do you live in KL or Singapore? KL. You live in KL. Yeah. And so when you think of that, that country and that KL in particular I've watched it and I, I was there first in 1993 so my office was in a place called Manara Hall Park which is near the Shangri-La Hotel if you can remember where that is and so that that city was like a big town back in 1993 and it's really exploded over the years hasn't mm -hmm. you know you Petronas Towers and whatnot you see this massive growth in population there, there's a real kind of entrepreneurial aspect to that if you compare it to, to me when I used to compare it to places like Bangkok and stuff it seemed to be that the, the Malaysians have this kind Kind of this drive to succeed. Do you think that's part of the DNA of people from a city that's growing as quickly as KL? I wouldn't categorize the DNA to a certain country or national. And, and, well, in many cases that, that could be true, but I really believe that it really comes down to environment, upbringing, and ultimately the burning desire that a person has. That's gonna be a much bigger influence than, you know, a certain country. Did you go to university? Yeah. Okay, I didn't go to university and uh, left school when I was 16 years old, but my daughters, who are 17 and 20 now, my eldest is now at university. When, when we hear from the likes of Gary V and other people out there, they talk very often about if you want to be an entrepreneur, then maybe university isn't, isn't the right thing to do. It's, it's broken. It what, is what, broken. What are your feelings on it? Well, I went to Warwick University in the UK. It was paid for by the government, but because of a lot of parties and good times in university, <laughs> I nearly failed. Um, and I literally did not learn anything in university. It was a good life experience in terms of, and I'm sure it has got some role in society, but literally the reason why the system is broken, here's why, okay? Sometimes people look at me and they say, they look at my line of work and if they don't understand, they'll say, Ping Jun, are you teaching get rich quick? And sometimes I, and I feel that that question is actually a trick question because I, I, I honestly do not know how to answer that question. Like I'm thinking, well, for one, it's not get rich slow. And it's like society has made it, think about this, that it is okay to go through this factory assembly line called school and pay six figures and be in debt to get the piece of paper and to work your next 10, 20 years to pay off that student loan before you even really get started. Mm -hmm. And that is accepted as normal and okay. But to invest a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand in specialized knowledge, education, whatever it might be, whether it's real estate, investing, social media, oh, that's get rich quick. So it's a really good point, think, isn't it? Think about that for a second. It's like that's how twisted it is. It is. But if you spend six figures, 
going to this wherever, college, university, prestigious, to pay for it back in your next 10 years, oh, that's, that's sanity, that's, that's accepted, that's normal. You know, it's a very, it's a very important point. Yeah. So should I pull my daughter out of university now? Then? Well, <laughs> you know, it has its role, but as long as we understand that that is not what creates entrepreneurs, then fine. Because entrepreneurship is not for everyone. Okay, but look, as you mentioned that word, my last question is around that because as far as I'm concerned, when I was younger and I'm nearly 50, yep. we didn't have that word. It didn't exist. It was right. small business owner or self-employed we had a lot of the time right. as well, yeah? One man band. We used to hear that kind of stuff a lot. Never entrepreneur. That was what other people did. Right. There's a lot of people that I think would like to be entrepreneurs, but I think that, that it's not for everybody. Yes. And self-awareness will help you understand that. Yep. But it doesn't stop a lot of people going down that, that kind of path of re and, and then realizing much to their dissatisfaction that it's not for them. Yep. How do you feel about that kind of stuff? It's true. So the, the safest practical way is that middle ground and the middle ground is to develop a high income skill set. Because let's, let's face it, nine to five transitioning to ent full-time entrepreneur, that is scary. And the truth is there are risks involved and other people like your family would be paying the price if you fail. So the middle ground would be to develop a high income skill set that is necessary where entrepreneurs, business owners would pay you big money for if you can help them generate a certain result. So case in point would be things like running and getting social media leads for a business owner. So for example, Facebook, Instagram ads, okay? The middle ground would be to develop, to develop this skill set because if you could get, for example, leads for chiropractors, gym owners, doctors, plastic surgeons, right? All these people, guess what? They're horrible at Facebook ads. And if you could help a plastic surgeon, I don't know, so like, let's say they're doing like, I don't know, a typical nose job. I don't know, let's say it's five grand, right? If you could help this plastic surgeon get five extra walk-ins, that would be an extra $25,000, right? And that's you doing a horrible job. Do you think that that business owner, that plastic surgeon would pay you, say 2,000 or 5,000 because you helped this other person generate an extra $25,000 in revenue, right? That's what I'm talking about. So it doesn't necessarily have to be just, oh, I'm gonna have to you know, dive head first to become an entrepreneur. But the middle ground would be to develop so it's, this it's high like dipping your toes set. in the water type yeah. of thing. Yeah, have yeah. a go at it and, and then, then don't, don't sacrifice everything right now. Correct. Yeah. And that's, that's the practical side. And that's what you can teach people to do, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Un understand that when it comes to building a sales process, when it comes to driving leads and ads and building a following, these are things that you could do for yourself or apply it for another business owner, another entrepreneur, where they will pay you a lot of money for it because you're actually helping them make money. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. I know there's yeah. other people you've got to talk to today, but for now, Peng, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Spencer Lodge podcast. When you get great guests like Peng on the show sharing those little snippets of golden information, it makes it all worthwhile. Now, if you want to see other episodes, then guess what you've got to do? You've got to go to that box over there and click on that box and you'll see other episodes. But if you want to see loads of my kind of stuff and subscribe and get involved in everything that I'm doing, then click over there, okay, and make sure you get every episode coming to you. I'll see you soon.